Today, I'm going to show you how to use the app GoodNotes 5 to create notebooks that you can, for example, use in your classes to take notes or how to use a digital planner inside of it. When you open the app for the first time, you will start on the main screen. Here you can see some folders of mine. On the top, you can select how your documents and folders should be sorted, either by name, date or type. I normally choose to have it sorted by name. When you look at the bottom, there are some more categories to choose. When you choose favorite, it shows you all the pages that you bookmarked and also the folders that you marked with a star. Under the shared category, you find all the documents that you shared with someone. When you click on the search button, you can search for a file or a folder and it also shows you your recently opened documents. Clicking on the documents button brings you back to where we started. In this view, you also have the option to change some of the settings. To do so, you have to click on the gear symbol in the right upper corner and then on the settings. Here you can change a lot of things. The most important for the beginning are the handwriting recognition, the document editing, stylus and palm rejection, and the automatic backup function. In the handwriting recognition, you can change the default language that is used to convert your handwritten words into computer text. In the document editing section, you can change quite a lot of things. The most important things are probably the position of the tool setup, which is on the top by default, and the scrolling direction. The only thing I changed is that it does not automatically open new imported documents, since this can get a bit tiresome when you import many documents. The stylus and palm rejection option is particularly important since you can choose your normal writing position here. Doing this is especially relevant if you are left-handed, but also if you have a different writing posture than the normal one. You can also change the sensitivity here if you notice that the palm rejection does not work properly. For me, medium, which is also the preset, works quite good. Another thing that you can change here is the input device for the smart stylus if you use anything else than the Apple Pencil. Another thing that is quite important for me is the auto backup function so that you don't lose all your data if the iPad for example breaks or is stolen. You can choose a couple of different cloud storages to do that. When you want to create a new document or folder you can simply click on the plus sign in the left upper corner. After that, you have the possibility to choose quite a few different types of documents. The one I use most of the time are the notebooks and the folders. But you can also choose an image, scan a document, take a photo or import a file. In addition to that, you can also create a quick note, which is a quick way to set up a notebook with your preset paper and without a cover. If you want to set up a notebook with some more configuration options, you have to choose the notebook file. Then you can first of all choose the paper you want to use in the notebook. You can choose the color and the size of the paper by clicking on the button on the left. You then have the option to change the color between white, dark, which is easier on the eyes but might be problematic if you ever want to print out your notes, and yellow, which resembles the old school notepads. There is also quite a range of sizes you can choose. A couple of A series sizes, which are standard in Europe, and then also the letter and tabloid size, which are more commonly used in Northern America. Additionally to that, you can also change the layout of the paper to be either in landscape or portrait mode. You can also change the language of the file. This language is going to be used for searching and converting your notes. And you can, of course, also change the paper design. There are some essentials like the dotted, the squared and the ruled paper, but then there are also some more special writing paper templates and for example planner templates. If you can't find the template you are looking for, you can also create your own individual template. To make the notebooks more individual, you can also change the cover of it. You have a lot of pre-installed covers and can also upload and use your own. If you are interested in how to make and import your own templates, either for the cover or for the page layout, let me know in the comments. Then I can make a video on that. After you are done with all these settings, you just have to give the notebook a name before you can create it. You can either do that by typing it in or by writing in the title field with your Apple Pencil. It will then be converted into typed text. When you then click on Create, your notebook will be generated and opened.
Once you are in the notebook view, there are a lot of new tools and settings to choose from. Let me start with explaining the ones in the upper left corner. If you click on the left facing arrow, you will get back to the main menu. The button to the right of that will bring you to an overview of your file. You can look at the thumbnails, your favorites for the outline. In the beginning, the favorites and the outline will be empty. You can add something to the outline by going back to the thumbnails and then clicking on the downwards arrow on one of the pages. You then click on add page to the outline and after that you have to give it a title. I'm simply choosing chapter one for the purpose of showing you how it works. When you now go to the outline view, you can see that you have one new entry for the page number two. The button with the magnifying glass symbol can be used to search within this document. The button to the right of that is used to bookmark the page you are currently seeing. When you have bookmarked the page, you can also see it in the favorites. The button for the slide is to export the file. You can, for example, choose to only export one page or even the whole document. You can also choose some different presentation modes if you are using this app to teach a class or something similar. In the upper right corner, you have the undo and redo buttons. Next to that, there's the add page button where you can choose to add different kind of template papers into your notebook. You can also, for example, choose to import a file into your notebook. The button with the crossed out pen disables the pen tool and makes it possible to click on links with your pen. This is really important if you plan to use this app for digital planning. I made this planner to structure my master thesis. If I click on some of the buttons down here, it will directly bring me to the specific page. You can also use this feature if you work in textbooks that, for example, have links in them to reference different sections. Choosing the three dots button, you can change some of the settings. Some of those settings you have already seen in the main menu. But there are also some new ones, like for example, rotating this page or changing the template of your notebook. Let us now get to the tools to really start writing in your notebook. The button furthest to the left can be used to create a zoomed in field of your notebook. You can then write in the zoomed field at the bottom of your screen. When writing in there, it is possible to write in more or less the same position as you can see here. It is also possible to add a paragraph using this tool. For the pen tool, you have a few options to choose from. The main ones being the fountain pen, the ball pen and the brush pen. When choosing the fountain pen, you can adjust the tip sharpness and the pressure sensitivity. You can see that the pen stroke gets smaller or wider depending on the pressure you put on the pen. This can be done with the brush pen to an even greater extent. Another thing that can change about the pen appearance is the pen color. You can either use the preset colors or create your own color palette. To do so, you have to click on edit. You then can create new colors by tapping on the dashed circle with the plus sign. When you have done that, you can choose your color in a couple of different ways, as you can see here. If you want to get the preset color palette back, you can simply click on Restore color set. In addition to that, you can also change the width of the pen by just adjusting the sliders accordingly. The second tool that I'm going to explain to you is the eraser. Here you can change a couple of things. The first of them being if you want to erase the entire stroke or just a part of it. Another helpful setting is the erase only the highlighter option. If you have highlighted too much, you can just erase the highlighter without erasing the written text underneath it. If you're not happy with anything on the page, you can also erase the whole page by just clicking on clear page. For the highlighter, you can choose the option to draw in a straight line. This will then straighten up the lines that you are drawing. If you don't choose this option, the lines will be exactly like you draw them. For the highlighter, you can also, just like with the pen, choose colors and also the width of the highlighters. Another tool that you can select is the shape tool. This makes it possible to convert hand-drawn shapes into shapes with perfectly straight lines or to perfect ellipses. You can also choose if you want to have a fill color inside your shape or not. I choose to have one here. The lesser tool can be used to move objects, text or basically anything. To do that, you just draw a circle around what you want to move and then you can move it around the page. Another nice tool, especially for digital planning, is the stickers tool. You can insert 
stickers wherever you want and rotate them and adjust their size. You can also add your own stickers to this tool. The next tool is the pictures tool. Using this tool, you can add pictures into your notebooks. On the top right, you can see all the recent pictures in your photo library that you could use. And you could also just take a photo to insert right now. When you inserted a photo, you have the option to crop it, either using the rectangular shape or the freehand shape. You can see that whatever you cut away is also see-through. The second to last tool that I want to explain to you is the text tool. You can simply add text frames by selecting the tool and then clicking somewhere on the page. You can then write in this text field by either letting your handwritten text getting converted into computer text or by typing. You can also play around a lot with the text settings. You can, for example, change the size, the font, the color of the text, and the text box color. You could also save the text style you just created as your default text style. Another thing that you can do is to move this text box around and resize it. The last tool is the pointer tool. This might be a helpful tool if you want to present something by using screen sharing in combination with GoodNotes. You have two pointer options you can choose from. One that behaves more like a normal pointer and one that behaves more like a pen that disappears after some time. Thanks for staying until the end. That's everything that I wanted to explain to you. I hope this video can help you to get started with GoodNotes. Have a nice day and see you soon.